Grace to you and peace from God who is, who was, and who is to come. Amen. So, I got a text from my son on Tuesday morning. I have awful news. I think to myself, okay, stay calm, don't be a dad, because immediately my entire thoughts start to go to, I uh, come up with this list of awful things that have happened, you know. Uh, so, so, no, I'm, I'm going to hold it together, and I type text back simply, okay, because I'm a dad, and I expect my son to respond immediately. <laughs> yeah, I'm stupid, I know. I wait and I don't hear anything. So after about a minute, I text back, are you going to tell me or just make me guess? <laughs> and I wait. Oh. And I wait some more. And about the time that I finally decide, I'll wait, maybe I should just call him, maybe he's lying on the side of the road bleeding, I don't know what's wrong. Finally, well, and realistically, it was probably maybe a two and a half minutes, but. It, it, it was easily an hour and a half, I'm sure. Um, I get a response. His awful news? Not that he has been fired. Not that his fi fiance has been in an accident. Not that the puppy ran out into the road in the midst of traffic. Or that his car has been broken into again. Not any of the hundreds of awful scenarios that have been running through my head. No. <laughs> they were shopping at one of those big box stores the day before. He tried on a sweater. They continued shopping, had lunch, went home, cleaned the house, walked the dog, had dinner, went to bed, had breakfast, walked the dog. And then, and only then, did he realize that he had left his vest back at the store. He called the store, and of course, they didn't have his vest. That was his awful news. <laughs> We all know I have no anger problems. <laughs> Admittedly, it was a very nice down vest. He had had it for, for a few years. As a matter of fact, independently of each other, we had each purchased the exact same vest. And, and so, yes, that, that is some sad news. It's simply not the way to let your father know about something at 8.52 a.m. on a Tuesday morning, or any morning for that matter. All is calm, all is bright. <laughs> yeah, I love my son. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, the thing is, all of us have mornings like that, don't we? Um, or, or even days when, when we really want that Christmas carol to be true. All is calm. We want that to be part of our lives right about now. We also want to wait, wait in the beauty of this season and the wonder that this season is bringing to us. But that's kind of hard, isn't it? We've all just survived the latest annual assault of Turkey Day uh, and the rush and the bother and the politics and the stress that that day brings us all. And in the, in the broader world, Christmas decorations have been up in Lowe's and Walmart and the mall for weeks now. Christmas candy came out the day after the trick-or-treating was supposed to happen, or it might have even been the day of. I, I really couldn't remember which of those two it was. My mailbox has been stuffed full of catalogs showing not only the latest winter fashion, but absolutely how much fun those people are having who are wearing those wonderful clothes or using all of those products that are being advertised in those catalogs. <sighs> we are busy putting up the tree, hanging lights, setting out decorations, whatever it is that you do uh, to, to make your house beautiful at this time of year. And, and when we take a step back, we can look at our progress and enjoy the efforts of our hands. And we strive to take in that calm, the calm before the storm of when Christmas Day is going to come crashing in all around us. Wake up, Jesus practically shouts in the gospel. 
Take a look around you, he says. Is everything calm? The holidays are upon us, and, and the solid waste material is about to hit the oscillating rotors, and that stuff is going to fly <laughs> everywhere. Our, our society feels like it's in a wreck. Uh, we call whatever we don't agree with fake news. We, we belittle others simply because they look or sound or act differently than we ourselves. Uh, we close our doors to the majority of people who are seeking help because a very few have lied to us, and, and we really feel foolish about being lied to. Our environment is not what it once was, and, and, if, and it's getting worse the longer that we sit on our duffs and don't strive to fix it. Jesus tried to let us know what was coming. He wanted to, us to be aware, to pay attention. Things are going to happen, Jesus says. Do you remember Noah? How life was going along and people were getting married and being born and going to work and taking in the harvest. They were loving, warring, drinking, eating with one another until the floodgates from on high burst forth. That's how it's going to be, Jesus says, until I come back. Did you catch the emphasis of the story, though? Jesus asked them, do, do you remember Noah? Well, yes, they remember the story of Noah. We remember the story of Noah and of how he was faithful and God called him. But that's not what Jesus is emphasizing. Noah was chosen for his faithfulness, but Jesus points out that the people all around him were totally unprepared. So what's important to you this Advent season? What do you think that you're going to be spending your time focusing on? Decorations, cards, gift buying, the cooking, baking, cleaning, those are fine things. Will you strive to focus on the life-giving child, that still small voice with which God oftentimes speaks to us? What is it that's going to bring you a sense of calm in this season of wonder? I have to say, I think my son Evan was right. We do have some awful news, or rather some awe-filled news. The news of the birth of our Savior of the coming of the Christ child. And we are all reminded that we are forgiven and loved and freed from all of the hustle and bustle and busyness of this world. And that no matter what the world is telling us, the gadgets that we're supposed to need, the, the shows that we're supposed to be watching, the clothes that advertisers tell us that we are to be wearing, regardless of what the world is saying about what the world thinks is important and vital and meaningful in our lives, we know, we who are believers in this God, this God of grace and love and forgiveness, we know that Christ is coming. Christ is coming to that, to that small village on the outskirts of the Roman Empire, as well as Christ is coming to us here, now, as we today wait in wonder for the birth of the Christ. Remember, that regardless what the world is indeed telling us, all is calm, for Christ is with us. Amen.